Hi guys, welcome back to my electric series. This is part two, where we're going to be installing some of the individual components under the driver's seat. There's going to be a few more of this series, so if you do want to see more, please do subscribe. Uh, it would really help the channel. The first component is the Victron DC to DC Orion Smart Controller. This is going to receive its power from the starter battery by a 60mm cable uh, coming from the cab. I showed you that in my first video, how I run that cable. Uh, what I need to do is I need to crimp the leads of these cables uh, with a ferrule to ensure that there is a nice clean connection into this charger. This one secured in place by screwing it down, followed by the negative cable which will go to the ground. The power out is going to be fused and this will go to the leisure battery to charge the leisure battery. So if you saw part one, you'll have seen that I created an aluminium plate for the DC to DC charger to ensure that it got some good airflow. So I can now get this attached to that. Now I've put the cables in. The next component in the system is the Victron Smart Shunt, where all the negative feeds from the system will go back into here so the battery can be monitored by the Victron phone app. I've created a bracket for this to fix onto the seat base. Uh, this connects to the earth point, which is the chassis, along with all the negatives from the negative side of the bus bar, and then the other side of this goes to the leisure battery. So under the bonnet, next to the starter battery where the 60mm cable is, there's a fuse so I can pop that in, and I can check that the charger is receiving power, and I can see this by the Bluetooth light is flashing. So next to fit the leisure battery, and I've got the 110 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery, which fits nicely at the rear of the driver's seat. I've made sure that these terminals don't come into contact with the, the actual seat itself. Obviously, you don't want them to short, uh, which you're not going to do because it's got the covers on, but you don't want any rubbing on there just to because it, it, you know, it could do some damage. Check this out. There's plenty of clearance there, so it isn't going to be an issue. I will be fitting some seat bases and I have checked this as well and they're absolutely fine with the seat bases which will be fitted soon. I have a fuse positive lead from the charger to the positive side of the battery so I can charge it. Also on the positive side is the main system power cable which has got a 200 amp mega fuse and this is going to go from the battery to the battery protect to provide the system with all the power. I've opted for a twin bus bar for the system, uh, so this is going to connect all the positives and all the negatives in one place. Uh, sits in the middle of the, the seat base itself and it's got a cover on it to protect from any anything getting in there, anything shorting etc. The Victron battery protect is again fixed to the seat base using some small bolts. This is above the uh, smart shunt itself, so before I do this just need to fix all the negatives in place and then I can get the battery protect installed. So the battery protect receives the power from the battery and the other side goes to the positive side of the bus bar and the bus bar distributes two different power channels one to the 12 volt system and one to the 240 volt which is obviously by the inverter. With all the main components in place, I can get all these connected up to the terminals of the battery, ensuring I've put the appropriate fuses in place. One last component of the system for this side is the smart battery sense. This is going to sit on top of the battery and will monitor the temperature and the voltage. Uh, what this will do is it will effectively talk to the other components uh, to ensure that for charge to take place certain parameters are met uh, because with a lithium battery it has to be under certain conditions under a certain temperature it can't charge it so this is just to aid, aid that. All connected up I can now open the Victron app and link all these components together so they can talk to each other. So you need to download the Victron Connect app from the 
Apple Store or the Android Store for you, you, whichever mobile device you've got. And once you've opened it up, you'll see all the devices which are in range. So as you can see here, I've got the Smart Shunt, the Battery Sense, the Battery Protect and the Smart Charger. So opening up the Smart Shunt, first of all, I see that I've got an update to do. So need to carry out this update and this will be the same for the first time you use it for all the appliances which you've got. So once the update is completed, I can open up the smart shunt and I can see the current state of charge, the voltage, the current, the power. I've got the uh, consumed amp hours, the time remaining of the battery before the battery actually dies and then also the input coming from the starter battery. So clicking on the smart networking logo, I can see here that it's configured that it's going to be transmitting data such as the battery voltage and the battery current to the other devices which are also connected on this network. So next going into the battery sense and the battery sense you can see the battery status is currently 13.8182 and this is also sending voltage and temperature to the rest of the system. Next one is the battery protect and again here you can see the current state of the battery and you've also got there the load output switch now the load output switch I can click that and then that will stop any load going from the battery essentially to the rest of the system so it's kind of an isolation switch so the Orion smart charger so you can see at the moment the current status is off and in here this is where we've got all the settings so the factory default setting is the battery which I have which is the lithium iron phosphate battery and you can see that it's currently being used in charge mode and there's lots of different parameters to to change there not something which I'm going to be going into today because I'm not a professional and the professionals are best to describe this kind of thing in the settings is we've got the engine shutdown detection so what this is this is essentially sending a signal to the uh, charger to show that the the battery is no longer the engine is no longer running so to stop any current coming from the battery I've got this connected by a, a switched switch power cable and from the fuse box comes back to the smart charger and that then lets it know that charge can be applied so the charge stage is currently off because the engine isn't started. So if I start the engine, you can see that the parameters start to change and then it comes up that bulk charge is taking place. So if I leave this on for a few seconds, maybe a couple of minutes, I know the battery is over 80%, it will change to the next stage. And there you go, you can see it's now changed to the next stage, which is the absorption stage. So that's the app, and it's up and running, but it does need a bit of tidying up. But I'm going to do that when I've fitted the solar controller, which I'm going to pop just here. So far, so good. It's coming along nicely. If you missed the first part where I show you how I planned it out and the layout, putting the cables in, you can see that video here. Uh, please do subscribe, as I say, I have got lots more videos coming soon solar panel fitting and the MPP controller is coming in the next few days and then over the series of the next few weeks there's going to be other videos of some of the devices which I've put in there uh, dash cam TV PlayStation lots of other things coming up so do stay tuned till then take care I shall see you soon